Hello and happy Wednesday. It is, what is it? It's April 3rd. I am MJ and this is the general reading for the collective. And today I'm using Unfinished Business, a ghostly tarot. And just a quick reminder that tomorrow is the cutoff. If you'd like to get your hands on a copy of this deck, you need to place your order by tomorrow. Uh, all of my decks are created only through pre-orders now. And uh, I only order for the amount that people have pre-ordered. So anyway, all right, let's get right to it. Let's see what we have going on energetically speaking. The first card is the energy that's influencing us today. That's that energy behind our mood, our decisions, how we relate with one another. Then we'll take a look at the situation and we'll see what is coming up on the horizon. What does the second half of this week look like perhaps? Then after that, we'll open up the door to the uninvited house ghost and we'll see what they bring to this party. How does their energy contribute? Then after that, we'll wrap it all up with some words of advice. All right, let's dive in. So, oh, it's Mary and Ted Hobart. They are so lovely, such a lovely couple with their dog, Roscoe, sitting by their side. And, you know, this couple, what they bring to our energy today is this feeling of bliss, a feeling happy right it's like feeling as though everything is just sunshine and roses and lollipops and there's just nothing that could go wrong when this couple show shows up in our in our reading i love this energy this is all about family and connecting and being part of something and it's that community when we're in this energy of the ten of cups you know we feel like we're part of something special we feel like we're a contributor to the greater good, right? That we're connected to everyone. That's why on this card, you'll see here, you'll see the little hearts that connect them all. And then all the pictures, the family pictures they've gathered across the years and the vacations that they've gone to. And just that feeling of, of harmony that this couple brings. So when you're in this energy of the Ten of Cups, I hope you feel this way today. If you don't, that's okay. You know, sometimes it comes a little bit later. Sometimes it takes something during our day to, to kind of bring that feeling to us. Sometimes we have to conjure it ourselves if it's not readily available, if we're woke up with feelings of angst and stress. Sometimes we have to ask that Mary and Ted come by and pay us a visit. And so having this Ten of Cups influencing us today, it's setting us up to be in a positive state of mind. So let's see what the situation is. So who's showing up here? Oh my goodness. Oh, Dr. Hayes, you know, <laughs> you're a funny creature, Dr. Hayes. Um, when we have this energy of the Knight of Swords, you know, it can be blunt. It can feel like we are, we're put into a position where we just need to get things done. And sometimes we can't always be nice to those who we care about and we love and we cherish. And so you might find yourself today in the situation where you're feeling this sense of, of love and, and, you know, familial bonding and this harmony but then something comes in during the day that triggers us that we all of a sudden switch, <laughs> switch modes. And you might find that it might be you who is focused on something and, and completing something and, and having this, this drive to see something finished and to have that eye on, on the goal. And all of a sudden, all of those warm and fuzzy feelings, they kind of just go out the window. Oh, you know, it can be hard. It's, it can be hard because sometimes when we're so focused on what we desire, I'm so focused on seeing something completed that we sometimes forget that there are other people who have feelings around us. And we might feel sometimes that those who are being maybe a little overly emotional or wanting harmony are not, they're not realistic, right? Sometimes you just have to speak up and sometimes we come off as blunt and and you know our our heart is in the right place you know we have this goal we have something that needs to be finished right we know what the outcome needs to be we can see it we're we're able to articulate that and sometimes it's in that communication 
that we lose um, we lose a bit of the message. We lose a bit of that connection with the people around us. You know, we're just focusing on what what our mission here is. And that's what the problem was with Samantha Hayes, with Dr. Samantha Hayes. She was so driven to be successful in healing people and, and mending people on the battlefield that sometimes she forgot that there was a human on the other side, you know, of that blade. So let's see who's coming in here. And so this might be you. It might not be. It might be someone else that you're dealing with. It might be someone who forgets that they're part of something bigger than themselves. It might be that you're in this warm and fuzzy space, and here comes someone who just has their drive, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, it's like having your balloon popped, you know, by someone who's just, you know, the way they, they speak or their tone. And it's not that they don't have the right intentions or the best intentions. It's just how they come off. They might come off as just being insensitive. So just be aware, you know, if you do encounter somebody who's kind of an ex, you know, a little extra prickly today, you know, you might, because you're in this place of feeling really good, it might feel even more blunt. It might feel even more uh, critical or, you know, more cold because you're, you're in the space of feeling really warm and fuzzy. All right, so let's see who's showing up here. Oh, great. Okay. So the external influence. So this, this house ghost is coming in is bringing Mari with them. And Mari's got a lot of baggage that she's keeping blocked, right? She doesn't want anybody in. She does not want to reveal too much of herself to others. You know, she's scared. She's, she's scared if she, she puts herself out there. She might get hurt, or if she shows her true feelings, someone might um, use that against her in some way. So she might have this energy that she's bringing to this situation that keeps you blocked in some way. So having Mari come in, it might bring with her, you know, it's like I feel like, we're starting off all nice and warm and fuzzy. And then we have someone who kind of comes in that has the right intentions, who's kind of, you know, maybe not the most uh, nuanced in how they communicate. But then we have this added element of blocking emotions. And so what I get here with this is that you have something or someone who might put the defenses up. And so there might be part of, with the situation here. The way I kind of see this unfolding is that you might deal with someone today who is afraid to show their emotions, who, who is afraid to express how they truly feel because there is this consideration that if I put myself out there, I may get cut down or I may face someone who is hypercritical in their pursuit of getting something finished. So, you know, if you think about this, like in a real wor world term here is that you might be feeling all warm and fuzzy as you go into work today, right? You might be feeling all good about where you are in this world and your family and life and everything is just hunky dory. And then you get into work and you have to deal with someone who maybe woke up on the wrong side of the bed, but they have a plan in place, they have an agenda, they're sharp as a tack, they're, you know, like they're ready to get going. And because maybe you're feeling a little extra squishy, you know, a little extra human today, they may see that as a weakness. And in their pursuit of accomplishing something, they may come off as being a little extra hard on you. And it's not because of you. We have a situation now that's brewing where people may come into the situation and, and feel like they can't communicate or they don't want to express any, um, anything that might ruffle 
the feathers of the Knight of Swords out of fear that if they show any sort of emotion, that might be perceived as a weakness and it might set them up as being a target. So going into the situation here today, you know, we have this influence of feeling good, of wanting harmony, but it's being challenged by perhaps someone who doesn't see the value in that maybe. They might not see the, you know, the benefit of being uh, focused on emotions and feeling that bliss because they're so focused on something else that needs to be done. And as a result, what they're doing is they're creating an atmosphere that breeds this fear of putting yourself out there. So you might find yourself at work with, with um, this desire to connect with people, right? With this 10 of cups, this desire to, you know, commiserate perhaps with others around you. But what's happening is because there's so much tension in the air, there's going to feel this block, right? You're not going to feel safe in perhaps expressing how you feel because there is that sharp, this, this fear of getting hurt, being cut down. So let's see what the advice here is. It's like you might just want everyone to, to be, you know, happy and, and, you know, drop their guard. And you might want everyone to just, you know, gather in a circle and sing Kumbaya, you know. But it might not happen today. That is, this is not the day to expect uh, joy and harmony in, in the workplace, perhaps, or in, a, in a, another situation where you have such a strong and powerful figure coming in like this Knight of Swords. Okay, so the advice here is, ooh, you might need to work some magic. You know, use your resources. Look around you. Maybe there is something there that you can use that will lighten the mood to help break down defenses. This is a, an opportunity for you to conjure that part of you that has the ability to bring people together and to spark change, to be an instigator, to be a change maker, to be a visionary. It might feel hard <laughs> to do that because you're going up against someone who has this potential to make you feel small. But they're working in the right direction. Here's the thing. This person, this knight of swords, right? It's not that they're a bad person. They're, they're, their intentions are good. Their intentions are for the team. Their intentions are to get something done so that there can be progress made. They just come off as being, you know, sometimes rude, right? Or critical or uncaring. Sometimes they come off as cold. That's just their personality. It's not who, it's like, it doesn't take away, it shouldn't take away from what their goal is, but sometimes it does because it's hard to win friends when you're being a jerk face, right? But they have good intentions. But it's because of that atmosphere that it creates this place where people don't feel comfortable to reveal their true selves or to express their, their emotions openly, or to say, hey, I would like it if you didn't do that. <laughs> I would like it if you were a little bit nicer. This magician is coming in to say that you have that power to bring everyone together to create something from this, to take the action that you need by utilizing all of the resources that you have around you, whether it be their sharpness, right? Their ability to see the path forward, their ability to find success very quickly, your ability to connect on an emotional level so that you can read people, you can use your social emotional intelligence when working with this person and perhaps when bringing other people into the mix here. You can be that person, but you have to use your resources and it's gonna take a little bit of magic and it's gonna take a little bit of work to get everybody to come together so that the goal is met but everyone feels good and feels in harmony. I hope that makes sense. Peace. Bye.